AW Executive Vice Presidents, the Young Bucks, say they have zero regret over airing the CM Punk, Jack Perry, AW All In backstage altercation footage last week on AW Dynamite. A big article has been released on Vince McMahon's life after WWE, who he's been talking to, his legal issues, and much more. Sheamus reveals he was close to retirement before his latest return to WWE television. Plus, we have the ratings for Monday's edition of Raw. Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of professional wrestling. Let's start off with the Young Bucks granting an interview with Sports Illustrated and talking about the infamous CM Punk and Jack Perry backstage altercation footage that was aired last week on AEW Dynamite. Now, AEW EVPs Matthew and Nicholas Jackson have discussed the decision to air CM Punk's all-in backstage footage on Dynamite. The footage aired on last week's show which featured CM Punk and Jack Perry getting involved in an altercation backstage last year at Wembley Stadium. The footage was presented by the Young Bucks who claimed that the altercation was orchestrated by FTR in order to throw them off their game ahead of the AW World Tag Team Championship match at All In. Fans online believed that AEW had made a mistake airing the footage on the show, but Tony Khan has doubled down on the decision, believing that it made sense to air it in relation to the story between FTR and the Bucks. Speaking to Sports Illustrated, the Bucks themselves were asked if they had any regrets airing the footage on last week's show, sharing the same opinion uh, on the decision as Tony Khan did. They said, quote, and this comes from Nicholas Jackson first, quote, as EVPs, we were given a task for that week by the boss, and we did it to the best of our abilities. Zero regret. Matthew Jackson followed it up by saying, quote, Since we are wrestling FTR at Dynasty, and with it being the first time doing that since All in London, so many feelings and thoughts came rushing back. Old wounds were reopened. We decided it was only fair to be transparent and honest with our fans. We needed to give them context about why we feel we came up short at All in London. Our bodies were there in the ring wrestling FTR at Wembley, but our minds were in the back with the scapegoats in the entire situation, Jack Perry. The three of us specifically were wronged that night, and I haven't gotten over that. So what do you make of the Young Bucks comments? Of course, partially in storyline, partially out storyline. Let me know your thoughts about it in the comments section below. Now, as I said in the intro, a big article has come out from NBC News regarding Vince McMahon and his life after WWE now that he is no longer with the company. Now, it says as follows, quote, as he faces a mountain of legal woes, former WWE leader Vince McMahon is traveling, eating out and keeping in touch with friends and associates, including former President Donald Trump. McMahon resigned as executive chairman of World Wrestling Entertainment's parent company, TKO Group Holdings, almost three months ago after a former employee, Janelle Grant, accused him in a bombshell lawsuit of sexual abuse and trafficking. He denied the allegations. McMahon, 78, is also facing a federal criminal investigation, although he hasn't been charged. NBC News and CNBC talked to 11 people familiar with McMahon and WWE about how he's been spending his time and how the global brand brand he built over more than four decades is moving on without him. These people, including close personal associates and company insiders, declined to be named, citing ongoing legal cases and the confidential nature of internal corporate communications. Multiple WWE insiders said he hadn't had any contact with the company leaders and figureheads since he resigned. Mark Shapiro, the operating chief of WWE parent company TKO Group Holdings, said in March that McMahon doesn't work for the company, doesn't come into the office, and he's not coming back to the company, end quote. That also means McMahon hasn't talked to his son-in-law, WWE chief creative officer and former WWE superstar Paul Triple H Levesque, or daughter Stephanie McMahon Levesque regarding company matters, sources said said. While she introduced WWE's WrestleMania event earlier this month, McMahon Levesque, who worked beside her father for more than 20 years and played roles in storylines, currently has no involvement with the company, according to people familiar with the matter. Levesque and McMahon Levesque declined to comment through a spokesperson, as did a WWE representative. McMahon is nonetheless indelibly linked with the wrestling outfit which he bought from his father 42 years ago. Still, he seems to have moved on according to multiple sources. McMahon has kept up his other routines and it's as if he's unfazed by his legal fights, two sources said. 
for instance. On an afternoon in late March, McMahon returned on a private plane to the United States from the sunny Turks and Caicos Islands, but he wasn't alone, according to a person close to him. He had with him seven kittens and a puppy, all of which he brought back to be adopted by his friends, the person added. Quote, if anything, he's enjoying life, end quote, said the person, who added that McMahon had also taken a trip to Italy. Jessica Rosenberg, an attorney for McMahon, declined to comment regarding the aspects of the former WWE chief's life reported in the article. In an emailed statement Tuesday, however, she criticized Grant's suit. Quote, the lawsuit's claims are false, defamatory, and entirely without merit. We intend to vigorously defend Mr. McMahon and are confident that he will be vindicated, end quote. Now, the details of McMahon's life after his WWE reign uh, present a stark contrast to Grant's accusations, which paint a portrait, a graphic portrait, of a violent and controlling man. In a federal lawsuit filed on January 25, Grant's attorneys said that she was, quote, the victim of physical and emotional abuse, sexual assault, and trafficking at WWE, naming McMahon and former WWE executive John Laurinaitis. Both men have denied the accusations in the suit. The lawsuit also named WWE as a defendant. WWE and its parent company, TKO, have said they take Grant's allegations, quote, very seriously. Quote, Vince McMahon assaulted, trafficked, and physically assaulted Janelle Grant as part of his decades-long normalization of treating women within the WWE as objects. He might have thought that Janelle would just walk away, but that wishful thinking couldn't be further from the case, and Callis, an attorney for Grant, said in a statement Wednesday. Every day we are focused on adding to our mountain of evidence, speaking with other victims, hiring renowned experts on sex trafficking, coercive control, and preparing to vociferously litigate this case, end quote. Federal investigators seized a phone from McMahon and have been trying to determine whether federal law was broken in the conduct surrounding Grant's allegations, NBC News reported in February. WWE had disclosed last summer that investigators served McMahon with a federal grand jury subpoena and executed a search warrant in July. McMahon is cooperating with authorities, according to one of the people close to him. McMahon believes officials won't bring any charges against him and that Grant's civil case will be settled out of court, said a person close to the former wrestling executive. Nicholas Bice, a spokesperson for the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York, declined to comment. A spokesperson for Grant's attorneys said that there have been absolutely no settlement talks with McMahon. While his legal battles persist, McMahon is often ferried by a private driver from his posh Connecticut home to Manhattan, according to one of the sources close to him. There he eats with friends at restaurants such as the old school Italian spot Il Tonello East on 46th Street, sees his longtime barber for bi-weekly haircuts and works with his personal trainer multiple times a week, the source said. Two other sources, however, say McMahon has otherwise been, quote, quite guarded, end quote, and often on the phone with his lawyers to map out plans since Grant's lawsuit was made public. McMahon has also talked to Trump, according to two people close to the wrestling, uh, former wrestling executive. The two billionaires have been in touch regularly, according to a person close to McMahon, although it isn't clear what they have discussed. Trump and McMahon go way back. The former president hosted two WrestleMania events in Atlantic City in the late 1980s, engaged in a wrestling feud with McMahon in 2007, and is a member of the WWE Hall of Fame. Linda McMahon, McMahon's wife, served as the Small Business Administration's head in Trump's cabinet led a pro-Trump super PAC and is now on board on the board of the publicly traded Trump Media and Technology Group. In 2022, the Wall Street Journal reported that McMahon paid $5 million in previously unrecorded expenses to the since-dissolved Donald J. Trump Foundation during two of the years Trump appeared on WWE programming. Uh, Another person close to McMahon said that the two men don't discuss their legal problems and that Trump doesn't provide legal advice. A representative for Trump declined to comment. Since he resigned, McMahon has been in touch with Dwayne The Rock Johnson and John Cena, sources said. Johnson and Cena, both Hollywood superstars, are two of WWE's biggest success stories. 
Publicly, Johnson has thanked TKO and WWE executives regarding his addition to the TKO board earlier this year. In February, Cena told the radio host Howard Stern that the whole thing is super unfortunate and it sucks, end quote, while noting that he loves McMahon and has a great relationship with him, but, quote, in the same breath, he added at the time, I'm also a big advocate of accountability. Cena and Johnson are both represented by the William Morris Endeavor Agency, which is part of Endeavor Group, the majority owner of TKO. A spokesperson for Johnson declined to comment. A representative for Cena didn't respond to requests for comment. This isn't the first time WWE had to contend with controversy stemming from its longtime leader. McMahon was acquitted of federal criminal charges in the early 1990s related to the steroid scandal that engulfed the wrestling world at the time. In 2022, he briefly stepped down as WWE's leader after the Journal reported that he paid millions of dollars to multiple women to cover up his alleged extramarital affairs. The Journal also reported that other women had come forward with sexual misconduct allegations. WWE amended its financial reports to reflect the payments. McMahon denied all wrongdoing. His daughter helped take over leadership of the company in the interim, but McMahon Levesque resigned when her father, who owned a controlling stake in WWE, returned in early 2023. McMahon then engineered a deal to merge the company with Endeavor Group's UFC to form TKO. Longtime Hollywood super agent Ari Emanuel is the CEO of both Endeavor and TKO. That deal announced in April 2023 made McMahon the executive chairman of the new company and he gave up majority control of WWE. At the time, he told CNBC he wouldn't be in the weeds with creative decisions, but he would weigh in on big decisions. That marked a big shift for McMahon. His family has been in the business dating back to the early 20th century. After buying the company from his father, who was known as Vince Sr., the young man then employed flamboyant superstars such as Hulk Hogan and The Rock, staging glitzy pay-per-view events like WrestleMania to build it into an international sensation. And while WWE is still defined in part by the family, McMahon's daughter and son-in-law are publicly attempting to push the brand into the future. At WrestleMania 40, held earlier this month in Philadelphia, McMahon Levesque surprised the crowd with an appearance and hailed her husband's leadership. Quote, every WrestleMania is special for its own reason, but I think WrestleMania 40 might be the one I'm most proud of because this is the first WrestleMania of the Paul Levesque era, she said. Linda McMahon joined her daughter backstage, according to an Instagram photo posted by wrestling star Charlotte Flair. Levesque himself proclaimed a new era for WWE. It was a significant moment for the brand, coming during the first WrestleMania since the Grant lawsuit, and it's the first one under TKO's management. Still, some rank-and-file WWE employees have griped that the company hasn't done more to address the situation, according to an insider. After McMahon quit, Shapiro told a global town hall for both TKO and Endeavor employees, in no uncertain terms, that the former wrestling boss wouldn't return, according to another insider. Shapiro also assured employees that Levesque and WWE President Nick Khan have his support, this person said. Otherwise, WWE is more relaxed since McMahon resigned in January, sources said. When McMahon was still running things, he would come in late in the afternoon and often stay until around midnight or beyond, two current employees said. His office at WWE headquarters in Stamford, Connecticut is unoccupied but otherwise intact, according to an executive who called it spooky. He had a reputation for being capricious and quick to fire employees, which generated fear and created a chilling effect, according to sources. Now there's more levity and freedom to make a mistake or suggest an idea, some employees said. The current leadership operates more conventionally, giving underperforming employees a standard progress report and opportunities to improve before taking action, they added. Some McMahon loyalists remain, but one employee said, quote, WWE is actually a really great place to work, and Vince distracted from that. It's been much better since he left. Another said, quote, people feel like they're on steadier ground, end quote. The company, meanwhile, is charting its post-McMahon course with the help of lucrative media rights deals. In September, WWE signed a $1.4 billion deal with NBC News parent company NBC Universal for domestic rights to Friday Night SmackDown. In January, it inked a 10-year, $5 billion pact with Netflix to move its flagship Raw show and other programs to the streaming giant next year. WWE announced both agreements after it became part of TKO, and McMahon ceded much of its official control over to the brand. There's yet another sign suggesting that McMahon's distance from WWE is more than temporary. He has sold hundreds of millions of dollars worth of shares in TKO since November, a sizable chunk of those sales coming after he resigned in January. That's different from when he briefly stepped down in 2022. 
quotes. This time it's like, okay, now it's over, over, one of the insiders said. So certainly a lot to break down in there. But what do you make of that article? Do you think that man is officially done with WWE? And do you think there's any future for a man in wrestling? Could he set up his own promotion or is he done, done? Let me know your thoughts about that in the comment section below. Now, a bit of an update when it comes to Sheamus, of course, he made his return to Raw this past Monday night, but he actually revealed he was almost forced to retire on the Raw after WrestleMania show, a vignette at hyping the return of former WWE champion Sheamus. Sheamus has been out of action since August, where he faced off against Edge on SmackDown in Toronto, which ended up being Edge's final match before leaving for AEW. Sheamus returned to the ring on this week's Raw show, picking up a victory in his return match against Ivar. Following his return, Sheamus is now taken to Twitter, where he shared photos of his recovery process, noting that he thought he was retiring just two months ago. He said, quote, the road back to the ring is slow, rough, and unimaginably painful. Two months ago, I thought I was hanging up my boots for good, but a lot of doctors, trainers, and physios helped get me cleared to do what I love. Fight. Hashtag, this is what we do. And finally, we have the ratings for Monday's edition of Raw, which featured the return of Sheamus. With WrestleMania 40 now firmly in the past, all eyes turned to this week's edition of Raw to see how the show's viewership would hold up following one of their biggest numbers in recent memory. For at least one week, the answer is pretty well. WrestleNomics and Spoiler TV is reporting that Monday's Raw drew 1.807 million total viewers, along with a 0.61 in the vital 18-49 demographic. Now, as expected, both numbers were down from Raw's post-WrestleMania episode, with total viewership dropping 23% from 2.362 million, while the 18 to 49 slid down 27% from a 0.83. Neither drop should be a massive cause for concern, as both numbers were in line with what Raw had been averaging in total viewers and the demo, down early 4% in both from the four-week average. In addition, Raw was the number one show on cable in the 18 to 49, beating out the WNBA draft. But there you go. So guys, this is the latest pro wrestling news for you. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe bottom right hand corner. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and I'll speak for you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video or click the bottom there to subscribe or the bottom right hand corner. Thank you very much and I'll speak to you again very soon.